iOS 11 is finally here. So beta 10 has been recently released a few days ago and the GM is coming out next week, followed by the official release a few days after. So basically by the end of the month, iOS 11 will have been released to all supported devices. Now iOS 11 comes with a ton of new features and changes. I've actually done a full in-depth review on all the new changes and the main features in iOS 11. But that one was on the iPhone. The iPad is getting some massive changes in iOS 11. In fact, it's like a completely new device now. So if you've used an iPad on iOS 10, you wouldn't really know how to use an iPad on iOS 11, unless you have a PhD on iOS 11, just joking. No, not really, but actually iOS 11 comes with a lot of new elements and a lot of changes on the iPad. So you could say that the iPad has been redesigned from scratch. And here's my full in-depth review of how iOS 11 has changed the iPad. So yeah, grab some popcorn or some nuts and enjoy. Okay, so the first big change is when it comes to the dock. So the dock on the iPad works in a completely different way now. So for example, you can now have up to 11 apps in the dock on the iPad mini. 13 apps on the 10.5 inches iPad Pro and uh, the 9.7 inches iPads, and then 15 apps on the 12.9 inches iPad Pro. And yes, I know, I know. This means that apps would look really, really small, especially on an iPad mini, especially in portrait mode. But I think that this is a small trade-off for having a lot of apps stored there all the time. And on top of all of this, you now have a new section on the right-hand side of the dock, which actually stores your three most used apps that are not in your dock. And if you have Safari or Notes or Mail on another Apple device or any app that supports handoff functionality, uh, so the last app in your dock would actually be replaced with handoff, which is really, really useful. So let's say that, for example, you have your Notes open uh, on your Mac, you automatically see Notes in the dock. So you tap on it and you can continue to type where you left off on your Mac, which is just amazing. And this actually applies to different apps as well. So it's really, really cool. It's not a new functionality, by the way. Handoff has been on the iPad for a while, but it's really nice to see it permanently in the dock. So very similar to how this works on a Mac. Now, another change when it comes to the iPad dock is that if you're in an app, you can now bring the dock back by just swiping up. So again, very similar to how a hideable dock works on Mac OS. But what truly makes the iPad so so much better now is full drag and drop support. So what does this all mean? Well, it means that if you have an app open, you can just bring up the dock and then drag any app from your dock onto the new app for sort of like this picture in picture mode for that new app. So let's just say that, for example, you're writing some notes. You can just bring up Safari as a picture in picture hovering window so you can see you can see all of your research and you know the page that you're reading and you can continue taking the notes without having to you know switch between Safari and notes like switching between separate apps and then you can just hold on any image or any link or even any menu element from any app and just drag it into well any app so now I can drag images or links from Safari uh, onto my notes directly. But what's even cooler is that if you drag one of the apps from the dock to the very left or even to the very right of the display, it opens up this new split screen mode. So now you can actually run two apps side by side and you can adjust the slider depending on how big or how small you want each window to be. This is really awesome and useful. Now we did have multitasking, multi-window support back in iOS 10. As well so this is not anything new but it was a bit clunky to use and not a lot of people actually used it and even fewer people knew that it was even there and you can do this with pretty much all the apps so for example if you use twitter or youtube and if you make the window really small it will switch into mobile view so similar to how it would look and work on an iphone this is a massive feature on the ipad but what else well multitasking has been completely reworked so that redesigned control center that I covered in my iOS 11 iPhone review, that one has actually been merged with the multitasking window. So what this means is that when you bring up uh, the control center, all the multitasking, you actually bring them both up. And you can do this by either double tapping on a home button or by sliding upwards uh, on the dock. And not just that, but if you're in an app 
and you want to bring up the dock. If you continue to slide upwards, it would actually switch to the multitasking page. So this is indeed very, very useful and also much easier and more intuitive to use for everyone since both the, uh, the multitasking page and the control center have been merged into just one page. And another useful feature is that if you group two apps and you open up the multitasking panel, the multitasking panel would actually show both apps grouped. Uh, so this is now a page contain containing two apps rather than two separate pages. And then another big change on the iPad is when it comes to the notes app. So if you open up the notes app, you can now scan documents directly from the notes app and the iPad would automatically detect the page. It will, you know, cut the corners and everything. And then you can convert it into a black and white image or a colored image. So yeah, this would be very similar to how an actual scanner will let you scan a document. And then you can even sign it or write additional text. Now, this does work best with an Apple Pencil, but even if you don't have an Apple Pencil, you can still sign the document. Again, it looks and works much better with an Apple Pencil. Now, if you do have an iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil, you're getting a few more improvements. So if you have an image or a document, you can just get your Apple Pencil and markup directly on that image without having to open up a separate markup window uh, or markup menu. Uh, but yeah, you can actually do this without the Apple Pencil. You have to open a markup menu, so it's a bit more, you know, complicated, so to say. But if you have an iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil, this will work even faster. And then another pretty cool feature is that, again, if you have an iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil, when the iPad is locked, you can just tap on the screen with the Apple Pencil and it will actually take you directly to the Notes app. So this is really similar to how you can write on the Samsung Galaxy Note lineup when the display is off. Well, not it's not really that great because the display isn't off and you don't have an OLED display, but still, it's really similar to that. Now, another big change is that now, if you write something with the Apple Pencil in the Notes app or the email or whatever, uh, the note would actually be searchable. So the iPad is now able to recognize your handwriting. Obviously, that would only work if your handwriting isn't horribly unrecognizable. So yeah, definitely you would need to fix your handwriting if you want to use the search feature on an iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil. So yeah, now, now it's a pretty good time to fix that. Now, another new feature is the new Files app. So this one actually works a lot like Finder in macOS or my computer and Windows uh, or you know this PC on Windows 10. So it's basically a file browser. So you can access your files from your iCloud Drive and even your files from different cloud storage services, such as Google Drive, for example. And now here's a quick tip. You can even select multiple items to drag into, I don't know, let's say a folder by holding on one of the items and then tapping on different items to select a few more. So drag and drop is excellent, especially with the new Files app. So these would be the main features in iOS 11 on the iPad. Now, of course, that there's a lot a lot more features in iOS 11 overall. So features such as the new smart Siri, which also gets uh, translations and Siri now has a new voice and the camera app is a lot better. Uh, live photos are getting more useful with features such as loop, being able to loop a photo, then bounce, which is useful for action photos, and then long exposure, which is definitely my favorite one. And then you also get the new customizable control center, you get the new lock screen, so there's a ton, a lot of changes, a lot of, so e even these ones, I mean, the redesigned control center, you could say that this is a really big change. So in this video, I've only covered the iPad changes, but if you want to see all the changes, all the major changes in iOS 11, check out my iOS 11 full review, or that's for the iPhone, or my iOS 11 top 35 plus new features. But yeah, these were just the main ones for the iPad. So there you go. The iPad is now more of like a Mac now with that dock, with drag and drop support, and with that reworked multitasking and multi-window mode. Now, of course, that all of these features are more useful on larger iPads. So if you have an iPad mini, it's, it's a bit more difficult to use multitasking and multi-window. But if you have something like a 9.7 inches iPad, or even a 10.5 inches iPad Pro, or even better, a 12.9 inches iPad Pro, you would absolutely love all these uh, all these improvements but yeah other than that if you want to see more in-depth reviews like this one feel free to subscribe to my channel it's, it's free by the way and also you can turn on notifications on my channel by simply tapping on that bell icon so that you're notified whenever i upload a brand new epic video let me know in the comments which ios 11 feature for the ipad or features do you find the most useful ones for you 
And other than that, feel free to give this video a like if you have enjoyed it to let me know. And also, let me know in the comments if you have made it until the end of this video, if you're epic enough to make it until the end. But yeah, this was pretty much it. So thank you all for watching. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Zone of Tech, signing out. Cheers.